Greetings fellow makers, I'm Bill and today I'm going to show you how I made my Han Solo blaster holster. This is the Force Awakens version of Han Solo's holster that I made for my Han Solo costume that I wore at Emerald City Comic Con. The first thing I want to point out before we get started is this is a first try. This was an excuse for me to learn a little bit of working with aluminum and a little bit of working with some leather. So I know for sure I did a whole bunch of things wrong, uh, but more on that later. Let's get on with the build. I started by patterning my buckle, belt, and holster using plastic, EVA foam, and paper. In fact, you can see a video of that process. I'll have that linked down below. I started by constructing the buckles. These were made from 1 8 inch thick aluminum sheets. I transferred the patterns to the metal and cut out all of the parts using a metal cutting blade on my bandsaw. Some of these parts required a little bit of drilling and a scroll saw to cut out the interior slots for the belt. The same was done to create the keyhole slots for buckling the belt together. Again, I drilled some holes, just this time I used a smaller hole and a bigger hole, and then I connected them using that scroll saw. Then I had to do a whole bunch of cleanup work so that these looked all nice and pretty. Mostly I used the belt sander for this, but other parts were tidied up by hand using some needle files and sandpaper. This made the belt slots nice and smooth and it helped make sure the keyholes would perfectly accept the machine screws for the buckle attachment. To attach those machine screws to the metal, I drilled in several holes in my sheets of metal. Those holes were threaded using a tap, making a perfect threaded hole to attach my screws to the buckle. To cover those screw holes, I cut out a couple of matching plates that would go on top of the functional buckle plates. These new plates were glued on top of the back plates, covering all the screw holes, Using a quick setting JB Weld, this is a two part glue specifically designed for gluing metal together. When the glue was all cured, I took the parts to the disc sander and sanded the edges flush. Finally, all of the buckle parts were screwed together using a little bit of Loctite glue to ensure that the machine screws wouldn't come loose. The screws were also added to the back plate so that the keyholes on the buckles could just barely slide into them, providing a secure yet removable connection. Before we get onto the leather parts of this build, I need to pause for a moment and thank our patrons. You guys have been supporting us over the years and we couldn't be more thankful. We couldn't be doing all of these videos without your help. If you're new to the channel and you would like to help support us as well you can head on over to patreon.com slash punished props and consider throwing a little bit of coin our way patrons get access to an exclusive tip every single week and i just started doing a regular vlog that is again just exclusive to patreon and finally i'm adding a really cool new feature this will allow you guys to vote on upcoming projects and videos Again, all of this stuff is accessed through patreon.com slash punished props. It's a great way for you guys to help support our channel and for you guys to give us a bunch of insight, get some extra tips, and help us with future builds. Thanks again, and back to the build. With my patterns in hand, I bought enough leather to make all of the belt and holster parts. The straps were pretty easy, just a bunch of long strips of cowhide. These were cut to length, and then I punched a bunch of holes for assembling and sizing the belt to the buckles. The large holster portion was traced onto the leather and also cut out. This big weird shape required me to buy a large chunk of leather, and I only had one shot at it. No pressure, Bill. The part that actually holds the gun was intentionally cut big. You can always cut more off, but you can't add leather back on. To stitch the edges of the holster together, I punched a crap load of holes in the edge, and then I used some barge cement to glue it all together, and then I stitched it up using some thread, making a really nice and pretty seam. Then I wet molded the holster to the gun prop. Now in hindsight, I should have done this before stitching the edges of that piece together. In fact, the holster ended up being way too big. Not a problem, again, I can always remove material. So I traced a new edge on the holster and then I actually used my bandsaw to trim off that extra leather. It was pretty easy. Then I punched, glued, and stitched it all up again. I also drew on a cutout for the gun to slide into. This was trimmed out using a very sharp knife. I also added a strap to the holster. This was attached using rivets and this was used to hold the gun in place. To snap it closed, I used, well, I used snaps. Go figure. Another strap was added to the main holster part to snap it around my leg. And then finally, the two holster parts could be attached. They were glued, riveted, and stitched together. With all of the leather parts 
finished, they were given a lovely color with a leather dye. I applied the dye using an airbrush and I think it turned out really, really nice. I like using the airbrush because I can apply more dye in other areas if I'd like them to have a little bit more of a rich color. With the leather parts all finished up, I could attach them to the belt buckles. The straps were attached to the belt buckle using some pop rivets. This attached them to the metal bits permanently. The rest of the belt straps on the back were attached using machine screws and some of those threaded holes. This would allow me to take them apart if I needed to adjust the sizing. The buckles for the holster were attached using Chicago screws. These look really pretty and they also allow me to take the straps apart again if I need to adjust the sizing. Those final additions made this a fully functional and legit belt. While I am pretty happy with how this thing turned out, I need you guys to keep in mind a couple of things. This was one of my first times using aluminum and uh, also one of my first times using Leather, I am fully aware of the finishing touches it still needs. The edges of the leather need a good burnishing, which I got a lesson in from my pal Kathy over at God Save the Queen Fashions the last time I stopped by her shop. So I'll be adding that detail to this belt in the future. I also know that Han Solo's belt has a bunch more stuff on it. And again, I'll be adding those as time goes on. I also think I need to adjust the color a little bit. Uh, I think in the movie it's a little bit darker of a shade of leather dye, so I can always add that again later on. Again though, I'm really happy with it turned out. It feels great to wear. It's got that nice authentic weight to it and it's incredibly durable. Thank you guys so much for checking out this fun, awesome Star Wars build. If you like this one, obviously you should go watch the patterning video that we did. I also have a video on how I painted this gun from a really really cheap toy and of course you really ought to go watch the video from Emerald City Comic Con where I dressed up as Han Solo and gave out a bunch of blasters to a bunch of Ray cosplayers because that was really fun. If you're new to the channel of course you really ought to subscribe we're climbing really close to 100,000 subscribers we're gonna do something really fun for that milestone once we get there so please subscribe check out some of our old videos and give making stuff a try I really want to see you guys giving this stuff a go because it's an awful lot of fun. Now, if you'll excuse me, I got to go see my pal Greedo. We have a couple things to talk about.